Hi, my name is Conan and I'm going to help you install Control Center software on your computer. When you receive your CD disk that has Control Center on it, go ahead and open it up. What you're going to find on there is an icon called Control Center Setup. I want you to go ahead and double click on that icon. When you double click on it, it's going to load a little menu that says Installer Language. This is where you're going to select your language. I'm going to go ahead and select English. The next page that loads up is called License Agreement. If you just go ahead and click I agree there, it'll move on to the next page. Uh, this page that you see here is called Choose Components. This shows you all the components that are going to be loaded on your computer that help Control Center run. Um, the first few uh, selections or components that are installed are required, so you don't have a, a choice on whether or not you can install them. However, there is a section in there called Tools. In the tools area, these are mini components that you can actually add or not add on your computer if you want to. The first one's called Schedule Backup. What Schedule Backup does is it actually allows your computer to back up video from the DVR on a schedule basis, like an archiving. Um, the thing that you want to keep in mind with Schedule Backup is that uh, it actually uses memory resources on your computer if you do install it. So if you don't intend on using a feature like this, I do not recommend uh, checking that off. The next one that you'll see is the mini player. What the mini player does is it actually allows you to view our proprietary video format from the Triton DVRs on any computer that does not have the software installed on it. This mini player was specifically designed to view our video only. Um, it's very small and can be added to any backup uh, copied over to any backup, any disk or hard drive when you're handing it over to someone that doesn't have our software installed on their computer. It's a really great tool. Uh, the next uh, option is File Converter. What the File Converter does is it actually allows you to take our proprietary video format once you've backed it up and convert it to an AVI. One thing you want to keep in mind is that uh, when it does convert it to an AVI it uses an XVID codec. Uh, this codec uh, sometimes is installed by default on some uh, Windows computers but it's, it may not be as well so if you uh, use a file converter and you cannot see the video once you convert it go online and uh, type in XVID XVID into the uh, uh, browser search engine and uh, install the XVID codec and then you'll be able to see it uh, the last feature that you can un, uh, choose not to install or install is one-time password. What this does is it allows you, if you forgot your password to get into the DVR, uh, it'll allow you for one time only, uh, one use, it'll, it'll get you in there and generate a temporary password so you can get into your DVR. Um, that's basically it. So then we're going to go ahead, I'm going to go ahead and leave everything but the schedule backup installed and I'm going to go ahead and click next. The last page uh, for the installation lets you choose a location to where you install the software to. Most people leave this by default in the Program Files folder. However, we added a button here to allow you to browse and put it anywhere and install it anywhere on your computer. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and click Next or Install, and we're going to let the software install on my computer. As you notice, that what it's doing while it's installing is it's loading three icons over here on my desktop. Control Center Monitor, Control Center Playback, and Control Center Configuration Tool. The installation is done, so I'm going to go ahead and click Close, and we're going to bring these icons over here because these are the three icons that you want to understand and know. The first icon is Control Center Monitor. This is the most used uh, icon. It's, it's where you're going to go if you want to view live video, and it's also where you're going to want to go when you want to add a DVR. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on Control Center Monitor, and it's going to prompt you for a login. Um, if it's your first time user and you never logged in before, the default username and password is administrator with the capital A for the password, uh, the username. And for the password, it's admin, A-D-M-I-N, all lowercase. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually check off save username and save password. That way I don't have to do it again. And then I'm going to click OK. And it's going to load up uh, Control Center Monitor. So we'll wait for that to load up here. Okay, what you're going to see here is Control Center Monitor. This is the main live viewing page. And as you already noticed, underneath my units right now, I already have some DVRs in there because I had it cached from a previous installation. I'm going to go ahead and delete those really fast so that you're seeing, uh, I'm seeing exactly what you'd see for the first time. So let me delete these DVRs really fast here. 
Okay. Now, if you're adding a DVR for the first time, most likely you're you're trying to connect to it on the same local network. And what that means is basically you're within the same building or the same location as the DVR. You're either on a computer that's on that network or you've brought your own laptop and you plugged into their network. Once you've done that, and as long as your IP, uh, you're part of the same IP network, you should see a little plus sign next to local area units. That means that your your software is seeing a DVR on the network, but you haven't added it yet. So you see, I click on the plus sign, and here it pulls up a little, uh, looks like a little disk drive with an IP address. This is a DVR that's on the network. So what you're going to do is you're going to left click on this, hold down on the left mouse button, and drag it up over the words my units. Then you're going to see a window pop up. It says add unit. It's going to have the unit information here. Um, it's going to allow you to number it. If you've got multiple DVRs, you can actually uh, number the DVR so they're in that order. Um, the default username and password for the DVR when you first connect to it is admin, all lowercase, admin, all lowercase for the password. I put those both in there and I click OK. Now you can see how it's automatically popped up underneath my units. I've got a plus sign. My, ca my disk drive is gray and it's flashing red. That's a good sign. It's detecting motion detection and it's running. So I'm going to click that plus sign. You see that there's 16 cameras loaded in here. Now this is just a demo, so I only have one camera hooked up right now. But to test, you can just left click on that camera and it should pull up the little video feed. And you see it right there. Now you can also left click on the disk drive and pull up all 16 cameras. But again, like I said, I only have one camera hooked up right now, so you're only going to see one camera. So I'm going to go ahead and close that out right there, and I'm going to show you some of the features in Control Center Monitor. Basically, everything's pretty redundant here. All the icons you see right here are the same features or, or options that you're going to see when you go through the menu tabs at the top. Um, the first thing I want to show you is you got uh, the view. View modes, you can change the view modes. You can uh, add in a view set. Uh, you can change it over to a mapping option. Uh, view set basically is a bunch of presets. Uh, you can actually set up, if you've got multiple DVRs, you can view any combination of cameras from any DVRs and just click there and it'll pull up that same view every single time. Um, <coughs> excuse me. The mapping mode, what this is, is you can actually import an image or create an image of a map. Um, it could be... Ooh, that's funny. <laughs> it could be uh, a map of a, a layout of a diagram or a map of, of a facility, and you can click and drag cameras up over it. Um, for more details or if you have any questions regarding setting it up, please give us a call at A1 Webcams. Um, the next option over here is Tools. This allows you to connect to the playback and the configuration and then get into the map editor. Um, also uses search tools, uh, event search tools, and options. Underneath options, if you click there, you're going to be able to go through the display, which is a whole bunch of features in here. You can change the viewer mode. Um, you can use DirectX or take DirectX off. Uh, you can apply the interlace. Uh, the color, you can change the color space mode, the bandwidth adjustments. Um, you can also change the captions on which what appears over overlays the video, like the channel number, the time zone, all that. Or you can take them off. You can also change the colors of the captions and also the size. Um, it also allows you to display the unit name and the mapping options, do sequencing if you want to go from camera to camera, switch over, um, and so forth. Uh, it also allows you, when you uh, have a quick record, if there's actually a, uh, if you right click on the image, you can actually do a quick record. It'll record to these specified locations on your hard drive on the DVR. Um, you can also do uh, the locations for where you save the file image name. Um, that's pretty much it in there. Uh, live view is pretty simple. Uh, I recommend just going through it and taking a look at all the features in there. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to give us a call at A1 Webcams. We'll be glad to help you out. Um, the next thing I'm going to show you in here, I'm going to go ahead and close Control Center Monitor out, and I'm going to show you the Control Center Playback. Control Center Playback is where you want to go when you want to play uh, archived video. So what you do to connect to your DVR for the first time or the second time uh, is you click this little button here, which is Connect. It's going to open up Unit Explorer, and it's going to list all your DVRs underneath My Units. Go ahead and select the unit you want to connect to and click OK. What it's going to do is it's going to actually go over to the right. It's going to load the DVR. It's going to show you the capacity, which is how much hard drive storage you have in there. It's going to tell you the from date and the to date of how much archiving you have in there and the percentage of how much storage you, uh, you've used up on your hard drive. What you can do down here, I always recommend changing the time zone to your time zone so that it plays back correctly. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to Pacific Time. And then you see down here below, you have the calendar. 
this calendar allows you, let's say if, I mean, right now I don't have that much on here because we just hooked up this DVR, but you can go back in this calendar and select whatever day you want to go back and play back. You select the day, you type in the time, and you click go. And that's pretty much it. And then it'll load, and you can click the play button. Again, we just hooked up this DVR, so there's not much to, to view, uh, but it would have gone back to that time. Um, right here, this, this ruler down below, this is your time bar. Um, what this does is it a lot. It shows you the time which is loaded. Right here, you see it says 3h, which is the interval. That's how long the time is on the bottom ruler. So if I go here and change that to 10 minutes, this is going to be 10 minutes worth of video right here. If I change it to 24 hours, this is going to be a 24-hour time from here to here. 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock. So what you can do is you can actually, it's, it's to help you go back and search. Because once you select the time and date and you load it, then you want to go and you want to do the fine-tuning. So what you can do is, if you can see here, I can drag this little black bar here along this, along this ruler and bring it to a specific time. So if I bring it over to... Uh, 7 o'clock, it'll load 7 o'clock. Again, we just hooked up to DVR, so I'm only able to go back a few minutes. So let's change this back to 10 minutes. Let's say I want to go to thir uh, uh, 1036. So this is 1031 over here, 1032, 1033. I'm going to go 1036, and I'm going to drag it over here. So now it's at 1036. So it's loading, and I can double-click, view full screen. Um, I can change the view modes, depending on how many cameras you're playing back. Um, let's say I find something I want, so I click pause. And uh, what you can do is you can actually go up here. There's a little magnifying glass, and uh, you can actually do adjustments. You can uh, adjust the brightness and the contrast, and uh, you can zoom in and out and, and use features like that. Um, if you use the save button, you click save here, uh, you can actually save the caption. So what you do in here is you can type in test and include the name, the date, time, event, info, click OK, um, and save it to my desktop. And what it's doing, let me minimize this, is here it is, is it's actually, I'm going to open it with a previewer here. Um, what it actually did is it saved a, a little snapshot of the video file. So I'm going to close that out, and I'm going to go back into the software. Let's say that I want to do a backup. Okay, So I click this little Save button here. And I go in here, and uh, I select uh, uncheck all, and I go to channel one because we have channel one hooked up. Um, I want to back up from 10:36 to 10:37, um, and it splits it up into 750 megabyte files if it's that big, so that you can burn it onto different CDs. You can change that if it's DVDs. You can include the mini player. Remember that mini player that we talked about earlier for uh, so you can back it up and copy for people that don't have the software installed. And I can choose where I want to back it up. We'll call it test. And we'll save it. And we'll click start. Now it's backing up the video file right there. And it's done. And I'm going to go to my desktop. And you notice I have the mini player here. And I've got the video file. So then I copy both those onto a hard drive or onto a CD. And I give it to someone. When they get it, they'll have these two files. They double click on the mini player. It's going to load the mini player. Automatically, it's going to ask you what video you want to open. I click that. I open it. And there we go. It's as simple as that. And it starts playing back the video in the mini player. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and close that and open up playback again. And uh, playback again, like, like the monitor, once you get used to it and you start using it, it's really easy to use. It's a little overwhelming looking at first, but after a while, it's really, really user friendly. Um, that's pretty much all there is to playback. It's very simple to use. Again, like I said with the monitor, if you have any questions while you're using it, feel free to give us a call at A1 Webcams. The last icon I want to go over with you is Control Center Configuration Tool. This is the icon you want to click on when you want to log into your DVR and configure your unit. So let's go ahead and double click on that. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, select my unit, which is over here to the left. And you see it loads a list of icon, a list of uh, stuff over here under system settings um, that allow you to do configuration. First thing is system settings. Shows you all your unit information. Allows you to import, export firmware information. Reboot it remotely. Factory default settings. And even change the IP address. Uh, camera settings. What this allows you to do is it allows, allows you to go through each camera. Uh, label the camera name. When you label it here, it actually changes it in everybody's software. It's a universal change. And you can adjust the brightness, contrast, auto gain control, and other things like that. 
um, time date when you first took up the DVR. Uh, you want to adjust the time and date. Uh, this is actually done on the DVR as opposed to in the software. However, you can now, we've added a feature which allows you to change the, the time zone um, and sync it with an NTP server. Um, next feature is connectivity. This is where you're going to go in and confirm your IP settings. Um, you're also going to uh, configure the WRS, which is our registration server. Uh, one feature about our DVR that a lot of DVRs don't have is uh, the ability to be able to connect to our server and sync up with it so it always keeps track of the IP address of your DVR. For uh, instances where you have a dynamic IP address of your internet connection that's constantly changing. And uh, if you have any questions you can give us a call regarding that. You can go to option and uh, change port numbers. If you don't want to use port 80 which is a default port number you can configure it to any port number you want. Um, then you go into device. Uh, basically, we've got the COM ports in here to allow you to do the text insertion, POS integration, and PTZ controls. Um, then you can go through each one of these, do the PTZ control configuration, the text configuration. Um, we have four channels of audio on our L, and uh, you can actually go in here and sync them with specific channels, each audio input, adjust the gain, and, and enable the recording on it. Uh, you can add multiple users in the DVR, which allows you to each user to have different abilities. Like, let's say the admin can do everything. You can create a different user that everybody logs in with when they're adding the DVR for the first time. It'll only allow them, let's say, to do live view or it won't allow them to do playback. It won't, will allow them to do PTZ control. You can actually go in there and, and, and give different rights to, diff to people. Uh, and here's a list of all those rights. You can just check them off for each user. Um, IP filtering. Not many people use this. What this is, is this will allow or deny specific IPs from connecting to the DVRs if you're on a local network. Um, you can go to the storage. The storage will list all your hard drives, how much storage is there, how much storage is used. Um, is the DVR bad? Is it in good condition? What's the temperature? It monitors a whole bunch of things, which is actually good for you. Um, uh, miscellaneous. So there's a feature where you can actually turn off the recording temporarily just by doing a check mark button. Uh, we have a system log in here which keeps track of keeps track of everything that's going on with the DVR changes of hard drives, adding remote you know configuration changes, user bad user logins, all that type of stuff. Um, this is where you're going to go in and, and configure the time. Uh, basically, when you first get a DVR, you need to configure the time. Uh, we need to tell it what the day, what's daytime, what's nighttime, what's the weekday, what's the weekend. That way, when you go in and you do your recording, um, you can tell it that during the weekday day, I want to record like this. On the weekend, I want to record like this. So uh, that's the basis of how you set up the recording if you have different recording. Most people do the same type of recording nonstop, but there are ways to specify and do fine tune uh, fine tune that. Um, events, motion detection, uh, you can actually go in here and uh, configure each motion uh, camera. So right now you, what you see is camera number one that we're in here and you see a grid. Uh, you see a little red X X is covering each little box in the grid. Right now it's set that if there's movement in any of those little boxes it's going to set be set to record. But you can go actually go in there and take out some of those so that this area that doesn't have the little red X's, if, even if there's motion there, it's not going to record. This is a really good useful tool when you're recording when you have cameras. But let's say you have a camera outside that's viewing a tree and a road in the background. There's lots of cars driving by, but you don't want that to set off the recording. So you uh, actually take that area out of the recording and, and it basically eliminates a bunch of false alarms there. Um, uh, since we our DVR has multiple sensor inputs and, and relay outputs. This is just where you're going to configure the sensor inputs, whether they're normally open, normally closed, um, and then uh, so that it can have a reaction, which is the next thing, and what it's going to do based on that normally open or normally closed. Uh, if you get, you know, the relays and the sensors a little bit more of an advanced feature, if you plan on using those, please give us a call to confirm and, and have us help you out with that. Uh, next feature is system alarm. You can actually have the DVR notify you if there is something goes wrong, like a hard drive failure, hard drive's almost full, fan failure, password failure, registration failure, um, a whole bunch of features. If you check those off and then go down here and check off how you want the alarming methods, let's say I check off uh, all these right here and uh, I want to be notified if any of these things happen. Well, I'll go down here and I check off send email. So now if any of these things happen, it's going to send an email to me and let me know. And I'm going to go ahead and uncheck those for right now. But then I'm going to show you the next thing. It's going to tell you the recipient email and the sender email.
you just need to make sure to type a real email address in both the recipient and the sender and how often you want it to send it um, and it'll start sending emails based on those alarms um, the last thing I want to show you is a recording um, basically you can set up specific individual recording for each channel and if you look at channel one right now we're recording uh, four frames per second at the highest quality which is Q5 um, uh, out of a one through five at half resolution um, alarm recording is off so I'm not recording on motion and I'm doing this for the weekday day the weekday night the weekend day and the weekend night so non-stop the same way all the way through all day long all week long um, you can go in here let's say you want to do a quick way to do this you can go in here and apply to current channel all schedule zones or apply to all channels if you click this button every channel is going to record that same way um, and there's multiple options. You can change the frame rates, you can change the quality, you can change the resolution on each channel. Um, it's pretty easy to set up. If you have any questions, again, give us a call. Um, that's pretty much it for the configuration. If you guys have any more questions, let us know. But uh, that's the basics of how to uh, install and use Control Center for the first time. Uh, thank you very much.